and start small. Stay consistent though. If you're going to do an audio blog, if you're going to do a YouTube blog, if you're going to do whatever, start small. Start where is, where is, uh, what's the word? Start where is, uh, pliable when you're able to do it in an efficient way. And I tell people to say, hey, if you want to start off a podcast a month, just say, hey, everyone's watching me on YouTube, Facebook, whatever. I feel led to, you know, to start this thing. I'm going to be doing a podcast once a month, once every two weeks, once a week. Then, like I start, I start off doing audio podcast i used to take my mom to work when i came back from tulsa and i have a little tape recorder while i was when i when i left there home it takes me 45 minutes um i'll be back to your question um it'll take me 45 minutes to take her to work but that 45 minutes back i had a little tape recorder by my mouth recording holy spirit just put words in my mouth and start talking went home uploaded on on facebook you know, and things started going. Next thing you know, went from podcast to video, video to speaking in front of people, to speaking in front of people, to doing speaking in front of people every week. Then turning me going to Nigeria. So start small, but start. Don't don't stop. Start. Don't neglect. Don't procrastinate. Start today. Start working on. Ask Holy Spirit. What's the first thing you want me to talk about? Holy Spirit gonna start giving you three or four points. You go for it. You decide what avenue you do. What was that question, uh, Nakadine, N- Kadine? I forgot, I'm sorry, I'm messing your name up. <clears throat> what was that question? How do you overcome a hurt you receive from your church? Um, I always tell people when you get church hurt or hurt by anyone, look at the response Jesus did on the cross when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Listen, as long as the earth remains, people will hurt you. People will disappoint you. People will neglect you. People will leave you. Don't get don't get confused with the people who love you for you versus the people who love you for what you do. People are gonna leave you because what you what you did for them is is no longer suffice for them. They'll leave. So when church people hurt you, listen, man. Remember, listen. Either either that's a bad church you need to leave, but ask yourself, <clears throat> in what ways can I forgive them? Because church hurts the worst hurt because people compare Christians to Jesus. We're just his followers. We're not perfect like him. That's why people get mad at the followers and they do the person who established the faith. But you don't judge a faith by the followers. You judge the faith by the person who established the faith. Because the person who established the faith was Jesus working on his followers to be more like him. And not everybody who goes to church is a Christian. Not everybody who goes to church is saved. Not everybody who goes to church is converted. So some of that church hurt could be from someone who's not even a believer. So you have to look at yourself and say, you know, is this water off a duck's back? Should I even be offended by this? Or should I be in a place where fathers are getting for they know not what they do? And learn how to guard yourself even more when you go to church from being hurt from somebody else. That's how we handle church hurt. I've been hurt by church folk a bunch of times, man. They some of the most, let me stop, crazy, conniving. And, and look why it hurt. If it hurt your feelings, but it was to help you grow up. Hey, that's a good perspective. That's a good perspective. Sometimes church hurt is the truth. If it's the truth, look at, examine yourself first. Examine your reason for being hurt. Examine your motives, etc. What if the church is good but lacking something I need, like a solid young adult group? See a need, feel a need. If you feel like God may be calling you, if you don't feel like you're supposed to do it, like, look, I'm going to my pastor. I'm going to like, look, man, we need something for young adults, yo. Look, I saw the need out there. I started to unplug. 99.9% of the people that come through on plug, I never met a day in my life. So if you see a need, feel the need. If you're not able to be the spokesperson of the group, be the one to start the group, and then God will bring the speaker, God will bring the musician, he'll bring whatever that will formulate that, that young adult group. But don't sit there and look at it and say, well, here's a need. If you're able to feel it, you got a mind, you got lips, you got ability, you got creative abilities. If you got the ability to do it, listen, start it. Listen, I don't got a degree. I haven't finished college. You see what I'm saying? I haven't I haven't accomplished a lot in regards to what man says would need, that I would need to start something, but I started it. Started. We're a five one three. We're a nonprofit. We're legit. We're about to be in these CMS schools. But imagine if I said, man, hey, I see a need, but I ain't gonna fill it. I saw a need and said, I'm gonna fill this thing. And if I'm not the man to fill it, God will surround me with the people that will help me fulfill a need, and I can move on to fill another need. So I say that encouraging, encouragingly. That if you see a need in your church, fulfill it. <clears throat> God wants me to let go of someone and I'm struggling. My life feels like a mess, but I know it's God. It's hard to let go. It's hard to let go. And I know it's a struggle. But you have to ask yourself, man, what's the what's the benefit 
of letting of what's the benefit of holding on? If holding on is hurting, you gotta care. Look, you gotta, listen. My dad used to always tell me when you get on an airplane, that girl, that 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 um, the airline lady, she'd be like, put the put the thing on you first before you put it on someone else, right? Because if you try to put the mask on someone else, you collapse, you die. Sometimes I gotta look out for you. Let go. Give yourself some space. Move away. Do what you got to do to distance yourself so that you won't keep hurting because you're holding on. You feel me? Your boy got to watch your surroundings, boy. Out here in these streets. <laughs> the angels out there watching me, but, you know, I saw some people walking behind me, you know. They don't know what I got up under this. Let me joke. I don't got no gun. Yeah, I do. You never know. Just don't come pull up on a Durango. I might. Anyway. I went on a TV show and I know I was called, but it's hurting me in my church, but so but so many people how do you prioritize talents I have so many I go around in 360 degree circle trying to do them how you prioritize your talents um priority priorities are listed based upon the demand the higher the demand the higher, the higher it is on the priority list um I'm very talented I love putting on concerts I can put on a concert in my sleep I can speak I can write I can encourage, I can life coach. There's a lot of talents. But some of those talents gotta stay on the shelf. I got so many ideas, man. I got enough, I got enough ideas to to make me a billion dollars. I, I have enough ideas that's gonna make me wealthy. I got tech ideas, I got app ideas. But God gives you ideas not for you to always implement, but God gives you ideas to put on the shelf. You don't want your listen, I, God told me, my pastor told me something very powerful. <clears throat> he said, Boy, you made you you put all your stuff out there. Now the, now the devil knows how to mess you up. You don't put all your idea. I remember when I had Unplugged when I started out, I was like, man, I'm going to do this mentoring, that, 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 that. And I put it all out there. Listen, what God tells you privately, keep private. Let him tell it publicly. Because when you open your mouth, you give your enemy an opportunity to discourage you from progressing. Give you an opportunity to, to, neglect what he, to neglect what God wants you to do. Put that thing on the shelf. Put it on the shelf. And whatever is demands is pulling on you right now, that's the talent you use. Right now I'm speaking. I'm not in a season of writing, but I'm in a season of speaking. There's going to come a season where I'm going to be more leaning towards writing than I am speaking. But you determine in your wisdom, with your wisdom that's been given you by God, you determine by just basic pros and cons what you need to do right now. <clears throat> and you know what, listen, develop a strategy. Listen, I got... 2016 is mapped out for me. I got plans. I got book release dates already. I got course release dates already mapped out. Put your talents in the plan and say, this is my strategy for 2016, 2017, if, if God's willing, you know, Lord willing. So, hope that answered your question. Got to watch these folks around. Any more questions? Thank y'all for the hearts, man. I appreciate that, man. <clears throat> That's love, man. That shows me that you that you liking what I'm saying. And that you think other people should watch it. So even after this periscope's over, man, feel free to share it with people. When balance insecurity and comparisons, how do you allow yourself to really see your God given talents? Um Sometimes you gotta just block the noise. Distance yourself from the noise. Your insecurities can only be secured by God. And comparisons are not biblical. It's not. It's not. It's not beneficial. I'm sorry. Or biblical. Uh, when you compare yourself to someone else, you're telling God that what He did in you is not sufficient enough. That you're envying somebody else's path. But when you have your listen, man. Like I'm not the best speaker. You know, there's a lot of people who speak better than me, who know more verses than me, but they don't know God better than me. You see what I'm saying? Like I pride myself on knowing Him, and and the more I begin to know Him, the more distinctive I become. And the more distinctive I become, the more valued I become. Because when you sound like everybody else, if I sound like T.D. Jakes, if I sound like Ravi Zacharias, no matter who the preacher is, if I sound like them and I tailor my whole style after them, hold on, it's my mom calling. Mom, I'm going to call you back. She all right, she was checking on me. <clears throat> I'll call you back, mom. But what I'm trying to say is that um, if I, didn't, if, if I kept trying to copy myself after everybody else, Listen, everybody gonna buy, I can find you anywhere. But when you're distinctive and you got a distinctive voice, you got a distinctive talent, people will walk miles to hear what God has to say through you. You know? So the best way to not allow your insecurities or comparisons to distract you 
and say, first off, my, my insecurities, I'm secured in Christ. When you don't have Christ in your life, you're not going to feel secure. But what Christ did on the cross should make you feel secure, knowing that he took everything that you face on the cross for you. And he gave, he said, he told his boys, yo, man, y'all tripping, get up off it, man. It's expedient for me to go. Because if I don't go, I can't send a comforter. And I got to send my spirit because me in this body, I'm limited. But me in heaven, I'm limitless. So I send my spirit in you to guide you. And he'll show you the distinctive ways for you to be. He'll secure your insecurities. He'll say, who made your lips? Like he told Moses. He'll look at Noah and black boy, build that ark. I called you. Hold on, this is my mom. Hold on, let me call my You know, you know how moms are. Hello? Where you at, son? I got to change my con Hello? I'm on the street. I'm just doing a uh, video on Periscope. No, I met I met Panera Bread. I'm just doing a video. I I'm on my way home. Yes, ma'am. No problem. All right. All right, bye. Boy, if I don't pick up now, my mom gonna keep. <laughs> you know. If I don't pick up now, mom's gonna keep calling. <clears throat> my only child, man. I'm a baby boy. You know a lot about a man by how he treats his mother. That's right, man. Mama calls, man. In the middle of a video, you gotta pick up. Or well, she gonna come find me. Any more questions before I gotta go? Boy, y'all, y'all comments are freezing, man. Yeah, man, God gave us parents as our first line. God gave us parents as our first opportunity to display respect. The Bible says, uh, obey your parents in the Lord. F no, hold on, that's wrong. Um, no, what's the scripture? Um, basically, with long life, for those, I forgot the scripture, man. But the Bible says, with long life, he'll satisfy you. Well, no, wrong scripture. But basically, with, I'm paraphrasing, saying, if you obey your parents, treat your parents right, you'll be blessed with long life, pretty much. The reason why you'll be blessed with long life because you learn how to respect. The reason why kids die young because they don't respect authority. Your parents is your first line of authority. Um, my mother was in an accident today. Her car was totaled, but thank God she's. I'm glad she's okay. Tell her we're praying for. Which, let make sure you let you me know what your mom name is. Yeah, he'll give you long life because your 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 life will be lengthened because you know how to respect. You know how to respect people. You know how to dip and dies. You know, you, you treated your mom and dad right. And next thing you know, you know how to treat everybody else right. Yeah. Any more questions? My mom called again. After being hurt and humiliated by people, how do you get rid of the I'll prove it? Oh, man. Good question. <clears throat> good question. Listen. You don't got to prove them wrong. Let God prove him wrong. The Bible says he'll prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. You hear that? Man, do you know how many people, people, listen, let me tell you a secret. People are watching. Listen, I'm going to tell you a secret. Y'all listening? People are watching, waiting for me to fall. They're waiting. They're watching. People used to rock with me. People used to be in my face all the time. They're watching. Like, is he going to make it? Is Josh going to survive? I don't got to prove him wrong. I know what me and God got. I don't got to prove him wrong. I know you want to prove him wrong, but that's pride. That I'm going to prove them wrong out of my efforts. No, 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 God. I'm just going to serve you. And when that table is laid in front of them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it will do more. Yeah, it will, listen, because you're you, now you're their slave. You're their slave. You're only working in order to get a reaction from them. You don't work to get a reaction from people. You work to get a reaction from God. You work because you first love him. And then haters will be mad because you... Listen, the greatest way, the number one way to make your haters shut their mouth is massive success. When you succeed, they don't want to see you succeed. But if you're so caught up on succeeding because of them, they'll notice that they were your, your motivation. But when God's your motivation, you'll still love them even when you see them. You'll still welcome them in. You'll still hug them. You don't got to prove them wrong. Just prove God right by serving him. And let God prepare your table. Oh, you're welcome, man. I got to be transparent. That's how you're going to reach people these days. You can't, I, can't be, I can't be talking like I'm perfect because I ain't perfect. 
I can't be talking like I got it all together because I don't. You feel me? 